Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. You should see what it looks like in here right now. It's, you want me to film it? Yes. Okay. It smells like dirt in here and it's a complete wreck. Um, so we have crates of tulips and daffodils sitting in here. I don't know if the video where I started to pull these will have gone out by the time the recap goes out. But uh, yeah, so we're letting them live the last of their days in here while they soak in energy from the leaves that are still semi-green and then uh, before we put them into storage to then replant in the fall so what do they do like in holland and places where they like grow bulbs they have machines that do it that's but do they sure. let them go till like july before they harvest them i i'm not sure they there... probably let them die back all the way all i'm the guessing way? like i wonder what that looks like because you see pictures of holland where it's beautiful yeah but i wonder if there's pictures also where everything is dying back and it looks terrible they should show that yeah, they like should. Like the reality of the Because like fields. everyone's garden goes through that. Yeah, and it's bad. In fact, like every year, you are you always say like, quit. Quit, let's quit with the bulbs. <laughs> like no more because that is just such a bad phase. And it's right when everything else is looking really good. Right. And then you've got like these random looking bad plants popping up in, in weird yeah. spots in the garden too. Because bulbs, I don't really... Bulbs are great. I think what you need to do is maybe um, if you don't want that look, which I don't love, mm -hmm. I feel like you should just cut the foliage back immediately after it's done blooming. Just But then you lose them most yeah, likely. Yeah, right. It's like an annual. Treat it like an annual. Oh, that's you lose too, annuals. It's too much work to treat them as an annual. You're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it feels quite humid in here as well. Yeah. <laughs> Those brought the humidity level up in here. Anyway, uh, it's been a great week. We did hit like high 90s this week. Um, so it's been hot, hot, but we are going to be taking a step back. It looks like we've got a couple of days in the low seventies and even the high sixties coming up, which does probably mean wind, but hopefully it brings some rain yeah. and a little reprieve in temperature is always a little bit nice, but we've got a lot of projects done. still doing a ton of planting and we got our 2025 annuals yesterday. We can't share them until July 1st, but <laughs> I'm going to be planting them. I have made our displeasure known. Proven winners totally know. They know. <laughs> yeah, they know. know. It's just a weird thing. Anyway, <laughs> they are awesome, though. I cannot wait for you guys to see them. Um, I, I mean, everybody can see them online already. Yeah. Um, but, but don't go look. Just wait. Yeah. <laughs> Seeing them, though, Shield in person eyes. is different. I mean, even when I saw the list like a long time ago, uh, but when you see the pictures versus them in person, it's different. Yeah. So anyway, I'm excited about that. Let's jump into the videos. No, not yet. Let's Store not update. jump in. Yes. Um, we did want to let you know that Mesto sprayers are finally in stock. It took like uh, four or five months. I don't know. And I like guess that. nobody else had them either. There was just an issue and we're past it, I guess now. So now we have these, these are a 360 sprayer. So, um, you can spray upside down on the side, you know, when you're trying to get to your seed trays in the very back, um, it can be kind of a pain with other sprayers, but this one sprays no matter what direction you're spraying. So anyway, that is that. We also have do it tools. Uh, this is one of my favorite shaped trowels right here. This kind of like heart shape ish yeah. trowel, um, because it is a nice size, but it scoops out a lot of soil all at one time. So if you're not using the Laura edition three inch auger, which I actually recommend more than this for sure. Um, if you're wanting to do it by hand, this is the one I like to use. I used this for a long time. Yeah. And now I feel like a sucker if I get down and use this instead of my <laughs> auger. Like, why would I do that? Well, sometimes um, uh, you can be a lot more, there's a lot more precision with yeah. that if you're not wanting to like mess up your mulch. and. Right. Like, what was, um, Paul, I asked him about this today and I asked him if he uses this one when he uh, trenches the... Oh, yeah. The drip line in. Does and he have like a hori hori knife or I something? I don't know what he, it's not this one, but he said he liked this for something specific. Oh. You know how you get that way. You get like a specific tool for a specific job. Yeah. So anyway, the other details Ken sent us was, so 10% off DeWitt and Felco products, no code necessary. And the sale ends at 11.59 PM on <laughs> June the 18th. So it's a one week sale. It ends at midnight. We should have Ken just write up like full copy for us. And then you can just read it. Be like, yeah. Are you needing a new sprayer? Then I recommend I will not. Mesto. <laughs> he, know, he doesn't do that because he knows I would never do that. <laughs> okay, now let's jump into the videos from this past week. The first one was planting 12 huge containers at my parents' house. So they have 12. I, I don't know why. I've always thought it's 10. And every time I do my math for plants that I take out oh, there yeah? to plant them, I always do it based off 10 pots. Huh. They have 12. 12 big wood containers are really neat looking. Um, and they go with their property. Like it, just like everything... The, 
the vibe is there. But they took out some lollipop blue spruces because they had lost a couple over the course of the last few years. And the other ones that they had left were massive. So to find ones that would match, it just wasn't working. And they dealt with spider mites in those spruces. So anyway, they took those out, had new fresh soil put in, a new fresh drip put in. So I didn't even have to do that part. Oh, I, I would show Did up. Did Pedro's crew do that? Yes. Nice. I would show up and plant at people's houses all day long if all that prep work was done. Yeah. Because that part's the... Well, part. the planting part is like the fun. Yeah. You get to see the result. Exactly. And so she had ordered, I ordered some cone boxwoods from Bountiful Farms, and then uh, she decided to add on some for her containers as well. Uh, so we both got our cone boxwoods from Bountiful. And so I just kept them here at our house since they dropped here. And then I loaded everything up. I took out Supertunia Saffron Finch, which I had initially ordered for our pots along the East Fence Line. Oh, right. I was going to do them all in Saffron Finch. And then I hadn't decided on a centerpiece yet, but it was just going to be the one color. And then when we decided to do the container competition, I had all of these Saffron Finch. And so sure. I thought, oh, I could take these out. And then I paired them with Superbina Whiteout. And then there was a Supertunia Mini Vista White in there because I didn't have enough Superbina, which in the end... I did. I don't know. Hmm. Like we got to the end of planting and I looked at Monica. I'm like, I have a whole flat of whiteout left. Wow. I was just, my math was just not adding up all day long, but they turned out so, so pretty. And my mom was really happy with them. So T Rose said, what a beautiful combination, green and yellow and white. Um, love her big trees between the planters too. Are those big oaks? Those are not, those are red point maples. So they, and they are going for they're it they're doing really well yeah. i love that they planted those because um when we park when we go over to their house uh -huh. it like it's all oftentimes in the evenings mm -hmm. and it shades when you drive yes. in it's so hot in the yeah. summertime and when you can park somewhere in the shade it just feels like i just love trees yeah, i don't yeah. know why people don't get on board with trees I like know. why would you not want the shade he wants to make a t-shirt that says plant more freaking trees <laughs> <laughs> i think you should yeah. you'd have to wear it though yeah. Okay. Would you? I don't know. I don't wear a lot of t-shirts. That's true. Maybe a hat. Viva Koshi says, what kind of soil is that? And also, will the boxwood roots interfere with the annuals in the long run? I don't know exactly what kind of soil they filled that up with. I don't know if it didn't feel quite like a spoma soil. Hmm. But anyway, they had it filled. They usually they use an sell organic. so many different types they of do. soil. They do. They sell... probably They might have just brought in whatever. Or if there was like a pallet with broken bags or, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. And then the boxwood roots, will they interfere with the annuals in the long run? I haven't really noticed that as being an issue in any of my containers that have had boxwoods in them. Um, so, I mean, I guess one day, one day when they've reached their full maturity, they may be a little bit harder to, you know, rough up to get your plants in but I even don't... then you could uh, you could use an auger yeah like a, a shorty yeah and i don't think it would hurt them at all either janelle said i never realized how big their property is how many acres do they have i think they have just about five it's just under mm. slightly two of it is in gardens and then three of it's in pasture mm -hmm. right that's about, so. about the right ratio darlene said i just wonder why people plant annuals when they know they will die and they have to spend money again to buy more flowers why not plant perennials that will come back year after year for your mother i could answer that in two ways? Sort of a, in two ways. <laughs> answer it in both ways. But no, I will answer it this way. Perennials just do not bring the, you the bang for the buck. Sure. Bang for your buck. Well, depending you on know. what kind of bang for your buck you're looking for. Yeah, they lull. It's like, they lull. They come out and they look great and then they go away and they don't look they don't look great for weeks and weeks out of the year. Most perennials yeah. that I'm aware of that would do well with like a boxwood sort of pairing. Um, annuals just are high performing, high impact plants. Um, and so... A lot of us like to plant them. Like every downtown in America plants like hanging baskets and, and annuals around containers. It just, it's like the most impact you're going to get for the summer. Yeah. Without the lull. I can see though the, the reasoning behind planting perennials and containers absolutely for sure. Um, it's just they're not as pretty for as long as annuals are. User said, how do you keep the wood containers intact year after year? They are cedar. Um, so cedar is really, it holds up really well to elements and water and all that. But they are also lined. Uh, I just think they're lined with landscape fabric, though. Oh. So they're still coming in contact with moisture. Unless so they won't last forever. They won't last forever. Maybe 10 to 15 years. But they're, they're oldish now, and they still look really good. Yeah. I'll have to take a closer look. Maybe they lined it with something else, too, prior to the landscape fabric. Would you guess, like, six years old now? Yeah, at least. Time flies. Yeah. It really does. Lauren said, 
what did your mom do with the remaining blue spruces? I have no idea. I didn't ask her. They're not there anymore. Pedro may have taken them. I don't know. Jan said, I truly appreciate how you and Monica form a team to help out Susan. That is sweet and a grand gesture. How often do you go and help your mom out in her garden? Stay blessed, all of you. Yellow and white combo with boxwood looks appealing. Um, yeah, Monica and I work really well with each other and so do my mom and I. We all have just done it for so long together. The first container Monica and I did, we were kind of like trying to figure out the rhythm that we were going to do it and by the second one we had it down and it was just like you know and it was fun because we were talking about like the old days mm -hmm. when she and I used to go out and plant the pots um, downtown uh, in our city and and those were good times so we were just talking about that um, so my parents have Pedro's crew out probably once a week I want to say and then Monica goes out there once or twice a week to help them out in their garden and they do enjoy doing a lot of the work themselves. I go out and help with projects occasionally. I don't go out and do like regular maintenance. We've got so much going on out here. Um, but it is fun to go out there and work on planting projects and things like that. I really enjoy that. Susan said, turned out so nice. Will the boxwood stay in the containers for next year and just add more annuals to it again, or will they be removed? Um, they will stay in there and more annuals will be added like this fall, I betcha. Uh, well, I don't know if she'll, if she'll pull, because those plants will stay nice until like the very end uh, but in the spring I bet you she goes out there with pansies and then she'll go back in with some other or maybe we'll go out and plant them with something next summer but um the boxwoods whenever we do a, a mass planting like that um she and I kind of are the same in that way in the way that we like to just keep it that way until something happens like like the whole blue blue spruce you know losing a few or spider mite issues or that sort of business the next video was Aaron's tree load came, plus planting a massive hedge. That was fun, but a lot of work. And you, yeah, like you kind of overdid it a little bit. <laughs> I think I did. Those I had like a trees. headache for the next couple days. Like five or six days. Yeah, I asked ChatGPT what... Uh, <laughs> what my headache was from. I think what happened is I probably like strained something because we were taking the those arbs out of the back of the truck. Mm -hmm. I was trying to manhandle them at first to get them because you have to get them to the edge so Paul can grab them with the the pinchers. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they're kind of like stacked on top of each other laying yeah. over. And so, but they're like, I don't know how heavy they were. Like heavy. over 200 pounds maybe each. Mm -hmm. And when you're trying to manhandle that, it's just not smart. Mm -mm. So then we started switching to chains. I should have put a camera inside to show how we were hooking up, them up with chains and moving them to the edge. So there's a metal basket around the root ball. You were just hooking to mm -hmm. part of the metal basket and just and dragging it. Yeah, Paul mm -hmm. would just drag it. And it dra they drag really easily yeah. across the floor of the truck. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, I think I just like strained something and it was kind of like transferring a headache. It's, it's pretty much gone away at this point. I was like taking my blood pressure too, though, just making sure, you know, like, yeah. it wasn't something else. Right. That was quite the load. That was the load from Bountiful Farms um, that came in. And there was, I can't remember how many spring groves, but close to 60 mm -hmm. on there. And then we had some North Poles, which Aaron and I just planted today. And then it had all those boxwoods. They sent a flower topiary, which we planted up this past week. And then it had the garden center's load as well. So that all came down and then I went through the inventory and we sectioned off all of the garden center stuff and Paul and Aaron took that right away down to Andrews. So it was a really fun morning and I think you guys started planting that afternoon, didn't you? Yeah, we got six done that yeah, same which, afternoon. Like maybe you should have like taken a break and started the next day. Maybe. But there was a lot of excitement too around it. Vern said, another great video. Do you still use Gilmore hoses? I was checking out what would be the better hose and thought who better to ask the garden answer. And I see a video a while back on Gilmore hoses. I still like Gilmore hoses uh, for like standalone hoses. I have one in our cut, not cut flower garden, our raised bed garden because there isn't a very good spot to put a hose link. Hose link is just a little bit too big for the area that we could attach a hose reel of some kind, but it's just it's just too big. Mm -hmm. um, and those arbors, it's kind of to the arbor that we would hook it to. The arbor's kind of falling apart. Well, you could just have a standalone post probably. I suppose you could, but I just, you, it would block a whole walkway yeah. in there. So anyway, I still have a, gar a Gilmore hose. I like the gray ones. I prefer a 5 8 inch diameter hose. I still do, even though hose link is not 5 8 inch. I kind of wish they were, but I understand why they, they weren't. Yeah, they work really well. I like the Gilmore hoses. I like hose link for what they offer. Yes. Um, like you said, it's like if you could put a Gilmore hose inside a hose link, that mm -hmm. might be better, but it would make it like twice as big. Yeah. It and wouldn't it would work. Be, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it does make sense. It's like hose link mm -hmm. has to have a smaller diameter. And then um, I tell you what, the Ely hose reel 
uh, that we have like the expensive one, oh, the 250 yeah, that's a foot. good one. We use that mm-hmm. a lot. Is that a hose like propi- proprietary It's their hose. hose. Okay. It's Ely hose. Um, and I want to say the whole setup is like 700 bucks or maybe it's five to $700. We've used that thing though with as many hoses as we have around here. We yeah. get that thing out a lot. It's a 250 foot. And if you're in a position where you need 250 feet, mm-hmm. a hose link is not going to cut it. Mm-hmm. And trying to drag around a Gilmore hose that's 250 feet. So having a real... Uh, you know, crank when, reel. When you're pulling it out, it's actually easier than a hose link to pull it out. Yeah. But you have to hand crank it back. It doesn't. And that uh, sucks. Yeah. But, but it's it, not hard. But it's on wheels. Yeah. And so you can move it around. Um, you don't have to like lug it around. Didn't Paul send a video of how he was? The, oh <laughs> how, yeah. How he uh, uh, was carrying it around. Right. Because you know it's too heavy to lift up into the back of a gator. So I think he had Bethany driving, and so he sat on I the tailgate. Oh, you were. Yeah. He was sitting on the tailgate, and he had his feet hooked inside the Ely hose reel. So he was the hitch yeah. for it to move it around. It's probably not safe in some way. Like if you hit a bump weird or something like that. Yeah. I was actually thinking about, um, speaking of Gilmore, I was thinking of uh, asking Ken about carrying them in the store. Hmm. That might be too bulky though. Uh, just carrying Gilmore hoses mm-hmm. in the store. They would take up a lot of space. They would. Um, but anyway. Amy Deeds said, you don't mess around when you say you're going to do something, you get it done. Uh, do you think that variety of arb is sturdier so you won't have to worry about snow? Snow load on those. I I don't know. The structure of those is so much more open and loose that I feel like it's going to be a little less scary if snow load hits those as opposed to North Poles are so upright that when you get a heavy snow load, it, splay, it can splay them out a little yeah. bit. So we go out with a broom. I've done videos about it. It, oh, you guys are so good to stick with us during win- the winter months. Like, hey, watch me broom snow off of our evergreens. But it's part of gardening still. Um, with the spring groves, I can't imagine. I, we haven't had to do that on no. our standalones out there. How do you classify them? Because it's a Western arborvita. The spring grove is a Western, right? Uh, uh, is the other one? Western red cedar, something like that. Hold on. Spring grove is a Thuya placata. So different. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it, what, how, how did they classify it? It's a Western... Western, just a Western. Western Arborvita. Okay, yeah. Yeah. It's more like a Christmas tree in that the, yeah. the branches go more outward, mm-hmm. whereas an Ar- the North Pole Arborvita, they go straight up. Mm-hmm. And so when the snow hangs on it and they start to splay out, yeah. it looks really well, bad. Well, it could ruin the shape if you leave it. Yeah, because they're snap. supposed to go straight up. Mm-hmm. So We've tied some of ours too. You yeah. have. Mm-hmm. Paul has too. Jen Williams said, absolutely love your videos. Thank you. Just curious, why do you put up the white fencing if you knew you were going to put in a hedge that would cover the whole fence? I like to double up. Well, having just for marking property lines, if mm-hmm. nothing else, yeah. just saying like, this is the line. Mm-hmm. I, like, I don't know if you've seen it, but um, like there's a whole genre of property disputes on social media, like on Instagram and TikTok and stuff. Over people, property lines? Yeah, people have these fights and mm. they make these like drama-filled videos oh, about geez. like where the property line is. And Yeah. But honestly, having having a fence right on the property line is just kind of nice mm-hmm. to denote. Like this is our side, that's your side. And mm-hmm. then there's no squabbling. Because if it's just grass, even if you've got trees on your side, like where is it exactly? Mm-hmm. I know in some parts of the world, fences are not that. In some parts of the country... Sure. Fences aren't that big of a deal. Yeah. And a lot of people don't have them, but we all everybody do. has them here. Yeah. Well, it's nice to know for your sprinkler system. And like, you know, if you have sprinklers and your neighbor has a tractor and you don't have a fence and you accidentally run over because you're not sure exactly where. Yeah. You know, I don't know. That could damage them. Levon V said, have you thought about terracing the slope? The view is lovely and it would make it more usable. It would help control erosion as well. We've talked about several different things we could maybe do with that slope. And there might be a day where it would make more sense to terrace it. Um, but it's at the bottom of our list. Yeah, it's way kinda, too many other things yeah. that we want to do first. Yeah, and what we're doing in here in the back area right now will not limit access to that area. So in the future, we can make it to that area really easily. We're not like putting, I don't know, structures and fencing yeah. and all that kind of stuff up there. It's just going to be sort of a mixed border planting, you know, and the trees that are on the slope are going to stay you know, we might get in there and try to maintain them a little bit when we have time to do that. But I think um, we, I might want to put some type of like a fence up or something like that and make it to where we can like get a couple goats in there to oh, eat do things you down. Do that? Yeah, but not our goats. Oh, I'm somebody like, else's oh, goats. I don't want goats. Because <laughs> if we just had water for them, you could have a couple of goats in there, eat it all down, and somebody could just drop yeah, them off. Yeah, but Bethany and pick them said back that up. even goats won't eat white top. That's what's in there. Pigs will. Oh, no, I think goats will eat anything. Mask her. 
there's a guy on TikTok that does videos where um, he drops his goats off to people's properties Mm -hmm. and it looks like they eat anything like they'll start eating the barks of trees if uh the barks of trees the bark (laughs) of trees it's not two plurals but uh (laughs) but yeah like uh if there's no other food source they'll they'll like they'll go after anything Mm -hmm. so they probably would wait till the end to eat the white top but they'll eat it eventually you ask bethany about that I will. Okay. Social said, with all the wind and shallow root balls, what keeps these from being blown over? I may have missed that part. Well, we've had a lot of wind since those went in. They are so freaking heavy on the bottom. I think it would take a lot. Trees are very flexible. They are flexible, but I can see, I can see where like it kind of serves as a wind sail. Speaking of wind sail, yesterday we were standing in the high (laughs) tunnel and we were standing there with um, the growers, the grower the growers who grow our annuals for us came and dropped off the 2025 annuals. And so we were sitting chatting and Aaron's like, what is that? And it was this big looming black thing flying through the sky. It was weird. And like the Witch, uh, Witch of the West. Yeah, it did look like that. And then we determined it must have been an umbrella, like a big patio umbrella just flying through the air. And we were able to see from one of our cameras, maybe we can put the footage up yeah. on the screen. Uh, it caught it. So it was on our neighbor's back deck. He's got a big umbrella and we saw it lift and fly through the air. And now it's all hung up in one of our (laughs) trees back by the red barn. But I can't believe that you actually saw it flying through the air. We didn't, but you did. It's bizarre to see. And it was like not that windy of a day. No. There must have just been like a little dust devil or something. I got caught in one of those. Was it yesterday? It might have been yesterday. Yeah. To where I was like, ugh. And my hair was blowing all around me and nothing else was blowing. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was wild. Yeah, but they are really, really heavy, and they are flexible. And I think because they're not like a solid, there's a lot of air through them. They're not catching air like an umbrella does. They'll, so um, think I feel it. like those would bend like significantly before falling over. Possibly, yeah. Anne-Marie said, your electric bill must be huge. Have you ever thought of getting solar panels, especially with all the sun you get? We've tried to pencil out that. that yeah, I've done the math thing. a couple times yeah. on solar panels, and it's like insanely expensive yeah we determined the amount of years it would actually take to to pay them off or for them to start paying for themselves and it's about the time when they start needing maintenance right (laughs) so we're kind of like nah you kind of just like hope hope that they don't need maintenance in between that time right and also hope you stay right because solar panels don't increase the value of your property um so yeah if you move before that time you're just Mm-hmm. kind of out the money right 41 chickadee said when doing these kinds of hedges how do you plan for losses or do you just start over with a smaller tree we ordered extra we actually ordered way more than we needed not on purpose but we did we thought we were going to use more on the hedge for the hedge and then we ordered extra on top of that so we could plant them out in the dirt lands and plant them in mixed borders so that we could have a few in the garden in case we do lose some we can have one of those moved <laughs> And so so right size. now we've got 14 in the ground that uh-huh. we could grab from. And then we still have eight to plant. Yeah. And we so. should probably just get those in the ground yeah, somewhere. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, what, we, we were kind of waiting for the berm to be done back here. Yeah. But you know what? We could just have Nathan come with his uh, spade, this little mm-hmm. like truck spade. Mm-hmm. And then he could, cause he's going to come out. We'll probably get one or two big trees mm-hmm. for that berm. Mm-hmm. Um, so We should just get those in the ground probably soon. You're right. Maybe during this cool down. Pamela said, very pretty tree line. Curious, are you going to become a grower for Proven Winners? We are not. We don't have the infrastructure for it. I'm not super interested in that side of things because I was involved in retail and, you know, my parents still have a garden center and they don't grow and they don't have any interest in growing. They've had so many opportunities to enter that sort of realm, but they're just like, no, nah. Um, And I'm kind of in that same sort of situation, I guess. I don't know. I love their plants, though. Yeah. You know, Ryan, the grower at Moss, Mm -hmm. um, he's like a Proven Winners fan. Well, he's been involved or has known and been involved in different ways throughout the years since the very beginning of Proven Winners. Yeah. It's really interesting to talk with him. Moss Greenhouse grows a lot of Proven Winners plants. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that he worked at Edwards uh, in Boise, Edwards Greenhouse, Mm -hmm. for like five years a long time ago um, and they let him at that point they let him just grow anything he wanted and so he would bring in seeds from all these different companies and grow kind of everything and he he told me he was just like I kept you know he goes I, I grew all the caliber mm-hmm. and I just kept seeing like the super bells were the ones that were performing the best mm-hmm. and therefore selling the best mm-hmm. and 
So like, that's just what I kept doing. And I just felt like Proven Winners was the one that had, was like doing the best and mm-hmm. bringing in the best plants. And mm-hmm. so, you know, it's kind of fun to talk to people like that. Cause yeah. we obviously, we think pretty highly of, you know, PW stuff. Yeah. We do. Um, but not to say that there isn't other good stuff out there. Obviously yeah. there is, you know, mm-hmm. we're not saying that, but, but PW, do, PW does have pretty good stuff. You guys should see my gator right now. I'm going to go out and plant later this afternoon or evening. Once it cools down, oh, such a pretty blend of proven winter stuff in the back of the gator right now. Um, okay, next video is planting annuals for pollinators. So I rounded up a bunch of annuals that I have had experience with for the most part, and those that I've noticed even in the, the high tunnel that attract pollinators. Like right now, if you walk in there, those campfire marshmallow bidens will be covered with the honeybees. Hmm. They will be. All the salvias will be covered with them. Uh, there's just specific ones that just attract the pollinators. Uh, and oh, super bean and swallowtails. If you want to attract swallowtail butterflies, that is the annual to plant. So we planted up the big area uh, near the where there's parking, kind of out on the end of the west side with a grouping of those annuals. And then we also planted up the area behind the chicken coop, which I absolutely love how that turned out. Anyway, Alexis Smith said, how do you not hit drip lines when doing that many annuals? Do you have the half inch buried underneath? Can't wait to see the color so soon. I don't know how I don't hit it as much as I do. The I do. The auger doesn't, uh, isn't like sharp. Unless you hit, this is when I mess up. When I accidentally hit like directly on top of the tube yeah. because the tip of the auger will just pop a little hole in there. Uh, and I do occasionally have to make a repair and uh, it's easy though. You just cut and put a coupler in and you're good to go. You'll break less strip tubing using an auger than you will with a shovel. Oh, for sure. For sure. Because it'll kick it out of the way. Right. And it kind of like goes up the auger. Yeah, Like right. the auger will just kind of like, yeah. Um, so I should carry a little thing of couplers with me. I always have to come back to Paul's Gator because he's got it all decked with drip stuff. I need yeah. to have like my own little just small kit. You need to have just a repair kit. Yeah, exactly. Wouldn't take a lot of tools. And it, it doesn't happen that often. I didn't hit one that day at all. And there's drip in all the areas I was planting in. Sunset Wind said, is there a possibility that you guys will ever install a system that adds fertilizer to your gardening water supply to save on having to do weekly manual fertilizer applications? My workplace, a retail garden center has one and your operation seems much larger than ours and growing by the minute, LOL. Love your videos and thank you for all your advice. It helps in my own garden and I've also passed a lot uh, on a lot of what I've learned from you and Aaron to my own customers. Thank you for that. That's amazing. Um, as far as installing a system that adds fertilizer, I don't know how we could do that. I don't think that you can. I would love to know if somebody has done it in an area where they've got trees and shrubs and perennials yeah. and annuals all in the same bed right. like you do. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're at a like a retail place or whatever and you have, this is our annual section, this is our right. shrub section, perennials. Um, you can do that because you've got everything grouped together mm-hmm. and you can do like Things like that things need, together. Yeah. However, it would be nice to be have like an injector system of some kind that could do iron. <laughs> like yeah, we sure. could send chelated iron to everything on our entire property, right. and that would be really, really nice. Um, but yeah, fertilizer for annuals specifically would be tough because I'll have like a con- a one container that I just pop into the flower bed around it um, that will need weekly fertilizer, but nothing else does. Or I'll have like in-ground stuff on one section and then perennials and roses and evergreens in a different section all running together. So it's really hard to separate out that way, but I wish, I mean, that would be, yeah, that would be the most ideal thing ever. If we could do that for all of our annuals. Tatiana said, you inspired me to get a Julia child rose tree. Do you protect them in the winter in any way? I did not this year. And I kind of stressed about it a little bit and I thought, why? why did I not buy that third one and plant it somewhere else in our sure. garden? Because I will never find a rose tree probably that looked as glorious as those did at retail level. Most of the time, rose trees at retail level look a little scrawny and it takes them a while to get uh, into the, what I bought them at. I mean, they were just so beautiful and ours did great. Now I didn't mess with them at all. Like all the leaves tend to f- like gather in the center. And I think that kind of protected the graft up top. Um, my, my main thing is keeping them staked up. <laughs> I spent a bunch of time out there on Sunday or something in the morning. I looked out and one of them was completely laying flat and there were stakes on it, but they just had... I watched your reaction in the camera you when did. you found it because you were out there blowing and then you kind of saw it and you were like, <laughs> you did like the open mouth. I did. Yeah, you did. It was funny. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yes. But I took care of it. So far, so good with those. I did not trim them at all. Like at all this spring and so they are just they're pretty big they're big yeah being a mom said being a mom being a mom being a mom 
Binamom? Binamom. I don't know. Silly question. You said you fertilize weekly. How do you apply that fertilizer at soil level with a wand or at leaf and flower level? I know we try to water uh, at root soil level with drip, but I'm confused on how to apply fertilizer. You know, some sometimes a uh, foliar application is nice because they will they will soak in some nutrients through their foliage. Um, we usually try for a soil application, but their leaves get it too, especially like big, massive, thick things. You just stick your hose on it, you know, and there's fertilizer going on leaves and then whatever gets down to the roots is great um, we use a big pull behind tank it's 150 gallons um, and we just dump a big bunch of fertilizer in there there's an agitator and it just kind of mixes it up and then we've got I'll show you guys maybe we'll do a refresh of our fertilizer how yeah. we do it uh, I think it probably bears repeating once a season at least to just show it's like a giant watering can system I mean you can scale it all the way down to a watering can sort of situation but since we do so many annuals, we just had to kind of up our game a little bit it's like to make one, it doable. One scoop per gallon. So if you do a 150 gallon tank, you do 150 scoops and you just figure yeah. out how many like tablespoons there are teaspoons or whatever yeah. you're. I know I figured it out at one time math. when we did the down. Yeah, I did one at a time just to figure <laughs> out how much to mix out, you know, right. the next time it was much easier. Cassie said, have you used the Proven Winners Eco Plus Grande pots? We have some around here somewhere yeah. yeah all the new 2025 plants came in yes them. yeah i planted in some eco pots that, some of the annuals i think they've improved them though since the pots i got last year maybe and i don't think that proven winners is trying to recommend that anyone plant in the pot i know but i tried it anyway just to see yeah super bells did great they did, did way better than the super bells i'm planting in the ground this year really i'm thinking maybe that was what made them awesome maybe the nice thing is you can I mean, you can throw it in the trash. You can throw it in a compost. Mm -hmm. You you can plant, although I probably wouldn't recommend that mm -hmm. um, because it does take, it seems like it takes about two years to fully. Yeah. But like two years is a lot better to break down versus the plastic that'll take what, like a hundred years. Right. So I think they're on. That's an improvement. It's, it's a good big, start. Big time. Yeah. Olive 8822 said, do you get aphids on your roses? We do. It feels like a never ending battle here. You know, we just sprayed with some Captain Jack's dead bug. Just a spinosad-based spray. Um, we try to do it either very first thing in the morning, early, early when pollinators are not out, or uh, last thing, like at dusk is the best time to spray. And I don't even think aphids are on the label for Cat and Jacks the last time I looked, but it works really well. Yeah. Which is, it, it's really handy because that's what we use, either Cat and Jacks or uh, BT on our super bells and super tunias for budworm because if we do not treat for budworm, we will not have nice looking plants. And if our super tunias... Uh, are afflicted with aphids as well, then you can kind of, you use the Captain Jacks and you take care of both problems at the same time. It's just making sure you spray at the right time of day. Are you looking up the label? I am. Maybe, and maybe yeah, it would be helpful for you to put your eyes on it. Captain Jacks is not, the dead bug is not uh, listed for aphids. Yeah, I didn't think so. But if it can kill spider mites, like, oh, it's going to kill aphids, right? Yeah. Like that's kind of crazy that it's not on the... The list. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. But anyway, we just sprayed, uh, and I had a bunch of hellebores that had aphids really badly, and we sprayed with Captain Jacks, and they look great. I actually walked by them on purpose this morning to take a look. They look way better. Hmm. Nicole Kurth said, Nicole Kurth. Huh. That's my ma maiden last name. Yeah. How weird. This is not a Nicole I know, though. How many days are between a recording and when we first see it? Right now, about five. Yeah, five or six. I'm about a week ahead. Which I, it's weird. I like it because it gives me a little bit of a buffer and I'm still working and making videos every day. I'm st I've been staying about a week ahead for the last three weeks. Mm -hmm. That's um, not normal. Which is not normal. I usually like to be no more than about three, two to three days ahead. I think what happened is that um, the weather was so nice for a while mm -hmm. that we were working like seven days a week, but we don't post seven days a week. Right. So, you know, like... Yeah, you just get ahead a little bit because mm -hmm. if you're just working every single day mm -hmm. and we kind of, I mean, it's like our hobby. So it's like we don't really mind working right. all the time. Well, and I'll go out in the evenings and throw a camera out or I'll go to my parents and capture a project that we do and the kids are running around and picking strawberries and picking flowers and they're having a great time riding their bikes around. Um, and it's just kind of our way of life, I sure. guess. And we just capture what we want to on camera. But yeah, I've never had a May and June where we've been this ahead. It feels kind of weird sometimes. And like, maybe we should. We try not to get too far ahead. Yeah. Because then it gets a little weird. Well, it does get weird. Like, you know, if you're planting corn, I, one week, 
of between when you plant corn and, and one week later, I mean, you'll probably have a bunch of germination. And, you know, if I was to show an update picture on Instagram or something of how the corn's doing on the same day that it, the video goes out. Right. People are like, what? Oh, that was fast. That's <laughs> true. Um, your Instagram posts are always like real time. Yeah. And so I don't post a lot of the projects and those, I just don't even take pictures of them. I don't know. It's getting, it's kind of weird. <laughs> it's, get, it's getting weird. <laughs> Uh, CJR said, when your temp hits triple digits, do you still apply fertilizer? We're experiencing triple digits now in Central California and wasn't sure if I should hold off on fertilizer on my roses, other flowers, potted plants, and vegetables. Will the stress of the heat and the shot of fertilizer be too much for them to handle? Uh, we still keep going with annual fertilizer every single week, no matter what. Um, but we don't really fertilize anything else. I'll yeah, fertilize in the vegetable the garden with, if I'm swapping crops out, but that's about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We kind of lull, except for on annuals. Next video was boxwoods in the cut flower garden and planting the flower topiary. That was so exciting. Getting those green mountain cone boxwoods and planting them on either side of the bench. I knew right from the gate that I wanted to do some sort of evergreen situation in the center to create some winter interest out there. But I think I think people are warming to my boxwoods around. And I think, are they? Yeah. I noticed like the support for that in the comment section of that video was much higher than when huh. I very first uh, talked about it. And I'm I'm like this close to saying, let's get those boxwoods on order. Oh, because, for this fall maybe? Yeah. I think it would be spectacular and I think that I would love it. You know what? That's all that matters. If you love it, you should do it. I just think that it, I don't, I don't want to be a flower farmer. And I don't yeah. want to, like, I don't want to grow like the massive amount of certain things that we grow. And I just do it because we've got the space to do it. So if we take up some of that space and, and really make the design like the, the shining moment out there and still grow like the dahlias, but do it on a much smaller scale and have like different quadrants do different things, you mm -hmm. know, and rotate like the, this is a, the tomato quadrant this year. And then, you know, you rotate things around and I think I would really enjoy that. Could we have the boxwoods on um, drip that's, uh, what's it called? The drip tape? Yeah, absolutely. Because they'd be in a That'd square. That'd be really convenient. Yeah. Just to run it all at the same time. And, and I don't think, um, so the boxwood cones would be separate from the box the boxwood hedging. Because the boxwood hedging would go the long way and the short way. And then they would come in and then they would make a, another box. And you'd have your curve still with your bench and your boxwood cones on the outside of yeah. Of it. How many cones would you need? None. Oh. Unless I do cones at the entrances. That's what I was thinking. Which I'm doing. How many entrances? Well, I've drawn it out a few ways. Are you thinking four entrances for each quadrant? I was thinking that initially. 32 cones. We can start smaller than six gallon ones. Because I would want to start with like quick turn size boxwoods out there. Yeah. Like small ones. Now that the... Um, the sprinters are like looking pretty good. Would you consider sprinters or would you still do winter gems? Winter gems. Mm -hmm. They're just consistently sturdier. Yeah. And it was just one year experience, I guess, with the sprinters. So I guess I can't judge them all the way. They look great right now. Yeah. They look out and they rebounded like the ones I cut back that looked so bad. Was that just last year? Mm. That I did that hard cut back. Or maybe the year before. I can't remember, but oh. I mean, I cut them back to the nub. I mean, I cut them back to, to super bad spider mite damage. They looked white and horrible, and they look so beautiful mm -hmm. now. But I just think the growth habit of them lends to being a little bit loosey-goosey loosey yeah. instead of being as structural as a winter gem. Um, so I think I would probably go that route, especially with how exposed it is out there. Yeah. Anyway, uh, and then I planted that flower topiary that Bountiful Farms sent out. I had to move the pot a couple of times. Actually, Paul suggested I, I um, got the topiary down in the pot and it was just totally bad with the juniper right behind it. It didn't, there was no contrast. It just got lost. And so we were standing around. Paul's like, why don't you just put it right there? There's nothing around it. And it would look really good and like you could actually see it. So that's where we put the pot. It looks really great where it's at. April said, what a cute little flower. It's giving 70s groovy vibes. It kind of is. Do you love it, Erin? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I was wondering what your days usually look like. It seems like you're always planting, but what else do you guys do for fun or throughout the day? You know, we took the kids to an arcade last week. We took Friday off last week and we took the kids out and we got, we went shoe shopping and they were enjoying that. And, uh, Samantha to, really enjoys that. Yes. She's a shoe girl. She, she totally is a shoes. shoe girl. Yeah. And we took them, we took them to the mall and, yeah. um, took them around and went to lunch and went to, um, 
uh, a place that has arcades. Anyway, they had a great time. We like to go swimming a lot. Mm-hmm. They love to go swimming a lot. Um, we hang out with family a lot. Yeah. We do that. And we hang out here, you know? Yeah, we like our property. We do. And we hang, like, we use our property hard. Yeah. We try our best to go to church on Sundays. <laughs> We've been a little lax the last couple of weeks because yeah. it's just been wild. But yeah, that's kind of daily life. Yeah. Lots of work, but fun. Deep Blue Tree said, you really got me into gardening, Laura, during the horrors of 2020, and now I just got my very first garden. That's so exciting. I would love watering tools that will last with Quick Connects that won't leak, but I have no idea what to buy. What are the watering wands you guys use? We use the... Dram. Dram wands. Um, I prefer... What's the length of the ones I like? 30 inches. 30? I think it's 30. With the thumb. Yeah. We've got them on the store now. Do we? Yeah. And most of the time, I take the diffuser off the end, and I don't use it. I just use it like a regular hose, especially when I'm uh, watering four-inch stuff because I don't like to overhead water or get a lot of water on the foliage because we have such hard water. Um, but they work really well. And over time, like after a long time of use, I think everything starts to leak. I've never used a watering one that's lasted forever, but they last the longest of anything I have ever used. Yeah, there's a 30-inch and a 16-inch. It's the Dram One Touch Rain Wand. One Touch is the way to go. Yeah. The 16-inch actually can be useful in certain applications. You know, it was in the Hartley. I had one in the Hartley on a on yeah. a pocket hose and having a shorter one when you're watering house plants yeah. up higher as opposed to you know this big old long thing uh, um outside i always use the 30 inch ones 25 gallant gallant says if you added the boxwoods around the cut flower quadrants would you keep the area as a cut flower garden or would you move it somewhere else same question for the veggies grown out there i think it would like we i said i would just do a little bit of everything and just kind of move stuff around out there i enjoy doing that i get i don't like things to get stagnant it makes me get feel bored with it um, in terms of plants in that sort of application. Now, furniture in the house, I get it set, and then it's going to stay like that for the rest of my life because I just don't like to fuss with that. But plants, I, I do like to move around quite a lot. Terry Zimmerman said, when you speak of a season, do you mean a year? Yes, like a growing season, so spring through end of fall. Sometimes you actually mean like a season. I know. It's, it's, it's interchangeable. Confusing. I need to not do that. It's like based on the context of your sentence, you have to kind of parse out <laughs> what I you know, mean. I know. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I need to change my ways. Margaret said boxwoods look great. Did the Paris Valier get transplanted? Not yet. It's still living in its box right where we set it down. Bethany's been watering it. Yeah. It'll get in the ground at some point. Kelly G said, just curious, how many water zones do you have? A uh, hundred. Some, but are, some of them have like two pots on them. Yeah, some of them are incredibly. Yeah, it'll be like two pots or the cold frame to the Hartley. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have you know like eight zones go at a time mm-hmm. because they're little. They're little zones. But like the lavender in front of our cut flower garden is on its own zone because yeah. it doesn't want as much water as everything else around it, and it's really nice to be able to um, break it up that far. What's yeah. the system? It's a hunter. Yeah, it's a hunter ACC two. It's made for more like enterprise, um, like college campuses or just like large parks. So we're not even utilizing. I mean, it could go, keep going. No, it can't. Um, like 150 though, right? No, it can do 225. Oh, eh, more than I thought. Yeah. So we ha- we can expand. <sighs> Looking you back here. Yeah. <laughs> we're getting closer though. So back here, Pedro is coming this week to finish up like they backfilled the frost free water lines halfway now he's going to come around the two wire everywhere which is for our zones and then um chad will come back and that's when the contouring will happen so contouring the berm back here cleaning up like there's piles of junk and stuff uh cleaning up all the weeds and everything behind the barn and really smoothing everything out that'll be kind of like the finishing area and then pedro has to come back and put in sprinklers where we put the lawn and Chad will put the lane in. Right. It's, it's just a lot of steps. It's going to take a while. And they have pro- a lot of other projects going on too. So we just kind of have to get one thing done, wait for the next person and get yep. that done and so on. Jacqueline said, Laura, you are planting a ton of geraniums this year. Don't you have to deadhead them? If so, when will you have time? Watch your channel every morning with my coffee. Um, we do deadhead them. Maybe not as often as we should. I enjoy deadheading that sort of plant. They're so easy to deadhead. And Paul and Bethany are awesome too at doing it. Especially Bethany does a lot of things like that. And I rarely have to tell her. And she just knows what to do. And she goes and gets it done. So awesome. 
Next video was planting roses, shrubs, and hardy geraniums. I think this is the last video from this week. So I had three just random varieties of rose that I just popped in in willy-nilly out in the garden. And there was a Sweet Madame Blue, a Silas Marner, and a Elizabeth Rose. And then I had some shrubs. We had the Aphrodite uh, Calicanthus and the Black Lace Elderberry. And I also showed you different year of years of growth on the Black Lace. That's so fun that we actually can do that with some things. Like this one I planted last year, two years ago, three years ago. And you can see the progression of size. Yeah. It's awesome. And um, then I also had some Kia Kia, Kia Bovo, Kia something, Biakovo, geraniums, hardy geraniums that we put in on the west side. And I really lean hard into hardy geraniums because they are awesome. And most of the time they are four seasons of interest. And by season, I mean winter, spring, summer, and fall. Um, most of them are all four seasons. So Lorray said all of these plant new plantings look incredible. They will for sure be nice additions to what's already there and looking beautiful. Question, I noticed the mention of the bloomering lilac. Have you had any of those long enough to see how they rebloom? That sounds amazing, and I've always wondered if it's actually amazing. Um, bloomerings, they do rebloom, and they rebloom re better if you go in after the first flush of blooms and deadhead them. They do have more energy instead of trying to like make seed. They have more energy in, uh, to put into new blooms later in the season. They never bloom or flush out or have for me as good as they do the first flush of bloom, but they do rebloom, and they're, they're smaller panicles. Um, but I think they're kind of a fun little shrub to have tucked in here and there. It's not something I would make a big impact out of in the garden, but I do like having them here and there. So my Arunkamar. What are those chartreuse plants next to the black lace elderberry at 1119? The leaves look like a sumac. Um, they do kind of look like a sumac. It's called a Mr. Mustard Spirea, and these do spread as well, not like a sumac. And when I say that not like a sumac, I actually mean it because I have a lot of experience with these. They're a false spirea, um, and... I noticed them kind of popping up a little bit, but nothing, nothing like the sumac monstrosity. <sighs> I actually had Paul go spray. Yeah. I don't think we're going to be able to get rid of them unless we spray them out. Sure. Well, um, we can use some of that like stump out or whatever. Yeah. We need to cut the sumacs down, use the stump out, and then just probably keep doing that. Yep. Just, I love especially the three original ones out there. I just love the way yeah. they look. And I will miss that structure so much yeah. right there. Lori said, where do you buy your hardy geraniums? I have a, a heck of a time finding them in my local area. Um, hardy geraniums, I usually pick up at my parents' garden center. My mom really likes those a lot, so she leans in pretty heavy on those as well when she's ordering, and I'm thankful for that. And I'm Because when I go after they've gotten a perennial load, I never feel bad about taking, <laughs> taking a bunch because there's always a lot of them there. S. Roy said, isn't James Galloway a climbing rose that can get up to 12 feet? Whoa, I don't know. I do have one in our cut garden. And when you say that, I kind of like remember that maybe it does get kind of tall, but the tag said three and a half feet by three and a half feet. Oh boy. Now I misspoke about the zone of the black lace elderberry in this video. Did I just not see the label right on this rose? Because the internet says it's a, yeah climbing rose as well hang on i said that the black lace elderberry was a zone four through eleven it's a four through seven and i said that as i was reading the tag i'm sorry i did not mean to do that i don't know what was going on with my brain that day i didn't show the tag dang it it says it's also a good rose for the back of a mixed border or it can be trained into a climber so that gives me a a little bit more of an encouragement on that one. Oh my goodness Lorette said, does the black lace elderberry ever get fruit on them to eat? I had a friend that had an elderberry and they would make jam from the berries. Um, you know, they do get berries on them. The birds usually clean up pretty quickly. They're really tiny. And I don't know that they've got the same sort of properties as the regular elderberries. Like the ones I'm familiar with are Nova and York. Um, there's probably a ton of different varieties, but those are the ones we always sold down at the garden center that were the actual fruit bearing elderberries. These are more of an ornamental. So I would not count on it as being one that you eat. Uh, Gardens Glory said, the West Side Garden is my favorite, but the South Garden is really starting to fill in and look beautiful. How tall do you thank you for that? <laughs> I love the West Garden too, and I can't wait till one day the South Garden feels a little bit more like that. It's getting there. Um, how tall do, you, tall do you think an elderberry would get in the shade? Oh, I don't know. I don't know that it would be very happy in the shade. I think it would have weak stems and it would not color up very well. So I, I would probably not recommend that for a shade spot. In a shade spot, I would recommend Japanese maple. 
like in our area at least i know the tags say full sun but we have to put ours in a lot of shade um and you can get some real beautiful like red dragon and um what's the real common one scarlet no what's the real common one japanese maple crimson queen oh for crying out loud i could not remember um you can find those in a lot of different places those do really well give you kind of the same vibe um foliage wise but you don't get the blooms from those of course Jaina said beautiful as always laura thank you i planted some perennial geranium last season and they're quite leggy and i'm really looking right now do you think i should shear them back and see if that encourages tighter growth habit yes i'm getting ready to cut back a lot of my first flush of perennial out there um including some ground covers um a lot of the salvias need to be cut back centaria not centaria centranthus um what other things there's some geraniums that i'm gonna cut back and that'll create a new flush of growth brunera uh ladies mantle there's a there's a bunch we'll probably do a video when i do that and you guys that is it for this week yes hope you guys are having a great start to your week thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one bye